They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. You know how television works. We talk, you listen. If you don't like what I'm saying, you can switch over to Oral Roberts, and then he talks, you listen. You can talk back to the television set, but nobody hears you but your cat. Cube, a $10 million investment by the Warner Cable Corporation opened in Columbus today. Warner Communications came to town. They wanted an entree into the marketplace. You know, we went around town asking who was the strongest personality they could get to uh, bring their, uh, their cable operation to the attention of the community. Well, this was a, a you know, it was a, a good market for Warner. And I guess people said, hey, Flippo's the strongest, you know. They had a system, a very successful system up and running there. And this was something new. This was a new frontier. And it, you know, coincidentally was the place where everybody tested. I mean, it's, it's the test market. And not only cable, but uh, two-way cable that you could respond to your TV set, and that was, everybody's walking around with their eyes going like this. The news in Columbus, Ohio is that December 1st, 1977 is Cube Day. For the December, I remember it was, it was cold, I know that. And they had decided that I would be up in a chopper, <laughs> circling the studio. We're circling and circling, and I'm getting cold, and it's bumpy, and the pilot is saying comforting things like, man, it sure is rough up here tonight. I said, really? He says, yeah, said, we shouldn't even be up here. <laughs> what a nice thing to say, a land lover. We shouldn't even be up here? Get real, will you? That was very exciting. It was. It was. We all sensed that this would be a historic day, and you know, the start of something different, the start of something new, the start of something that we thought would be a, a tremendous success. Uh, as it turned out, I think it's it's now just really becoming significantly historic or historically significant, um, because now interactive television really means something. And so what we went on into the studio and we had all kinds of ceremonies with the uh, executives um, from Warner. They came in from New York, or should I say New York. You know, when you tell people you were there the first day that interactive television went on the air, and the very first interactive television project, it's, it's an awesome thing. And that's something that he will always have, that, that honor of being the first performer on any kind of interactive television somebody these tapes now and it's it's like why is a clown hosting a show where you're in giving what well it's not just a clown it's flippo the clown the warner people have bought up 140 cable franchises around the country small ones mostly before cube can wire up new york and los angeles it will have to decide what it wants to be it failed because of flippo believe me never put your career in the hands of a clown it's you know he's no no it, it failed because they didn't know how to keep up with the technology. It was very expensive. It was way before its time. We were not making it. You know, when you're getting 700 homes for a show, you don't have any tune-in. See, you can't go to a sponsor and say, hey, I want you to buy time in uh, Flippo's uh, game show for the kids. Uh, you're selling cereal or whatever. Kids love that stuff. Oh, okay, fine. How much are your commercials? Oh, uh, $50, $60 for 30 seconds. Okay, how many homes you reach? Uh, homes? Yes, how many homes are you getting to? Uh, 
700? Hey, what, what, pardon me, what did you say? I said 700. Did you say 700? 700? 700? 700? 700? 700? 700? Did you say 700? And the uh, salesman would say, well, yes, I did. So how many customers does Cube have? Really, the figure changes by, uh, by the hour. Uh, we started with a base of Warner subscribers and uh, 26,000, and we're in the process of moving through those homes right now. And I can't give you an exact figure right at this moment. Can you give me a ballpark estimate? No, I can't. You can or you won't? No, I won't. It was not a big audience. Warner obviously won't recover its $10 million investment from its Columbus customers. 700 homes. That's just in my neighborhood, you know. So it, it became very, very difficult. And... Uh, it got to the point, now this is the figure that was bandied about, I don't know if it's uh, correct or not, but it sounds like it might be right. But the, uh, the cable system was losing a million dollars a month, uh, which only shows the power of the, the Warner organization. They were that big that could afford to lose that kind of money, and, but it, they, they couldn't do it very long. I had always wanted to be in comedy. And, and it was interesting because I never thought that I would go to Columbus, Ohio and work with somebody who had a, a comedic orientation. For me, it was very helpful at this early stage of my career to work with somebody who had that background. It was something that, you know, maybe I, I, I would have worked with had I moved to Los Angeles or New York, but, but I never expected to work with somebody with that kind of knowledge in Columbus. And, and I learned a lot from him. And, you know, it was, a, it was a nice association. So anyway, I was there for six years. And, uh, and then when it was all over, I just uh, went in and shook hands and said, hey, see you guys. Hey, suck it. Never trust, never put your hands in, the, in a clown. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that, I got it all, man, that's all. Are we finished now? Is that a wrap?